Hello and welcome to Chuck's Diecast Car and Model Reviews. Today uh, we're taking a look at this uh, pretty neat little model here. This is the Alfa Romeo 33-2 Daytona. It's very likely a race car you've never heard of, so I'll go ahead and talk to you about that as well. But this particular model is made by a company called Rico, which I've never heard of before and never heard of since. But it is a pretty good model. In fact, uh, if you take a look at the underside here, strangely enough, this uh, underside is made of die cast metal. So that's uh, pretty neat. Uh, but uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the uh, Alpha 33 2 Daytona, well, um, it was actually a pretty good race car back in the day. Problem was, its competition was generally better. For example, this car raced at Le Mans in 1968. And at the three entries that uh, Alfa Romeo put in there, finished 4th, 5th, and 6th. The unfortunate thing is, back in 68, the Ford GT40 was out there as well. So that's who won. Uh, but given the fact that this car has only a 2 liter V8 in it, it did uh, definitely acquit itself pretty well. Uh, it had its 2 liter engine produced 270 horsepower. So it was uh, pretty quick because it only weighed about 1300 pounds. Um, this uh, car was also the uh, basis for an open version, uh, you know, a spider version, uh, which uh, raced at, you know, things like the Targa Florio, things like that. And also there were a few made into road cars. Um, the Alpha 33 Stradale, and you may want to look this up, is considered by many one of the most beautiful road cars ever made. Okay, I'd love to get a model of it. Uh, actually, I do have a model of it, but it's a Hot Wheels, so it's a little tiny. But I would certainly love to have one because it is a gorgeous, gorgeous car. So much so that Alfa Romeo is actually reintroducing uh, uh, sort of a tribute version of it now. Um, and uh, also several concept cars of the late 60s, early 70s were based on the Alpha 33 chassis as well, including, I believe, the Carabo, which is one of the more famous ones. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this model here. Um, well, let's start off with the, uh, the wheels. I mean, they uh, look very nice. They're typical of uh, Alfa Romeo wheels of back in the day with the little holes in them and that actually carried on through till probably the late 80s, early 90s with a lot of their models. You can see the uh, quadrifolio or four-leaf clover in the triangle, which is a symbol of the Alfa Romeo race team, the Firestone badging. And then on the door, there's the P for prototype. Uh, up front here... Some pretty decent detail here as well. You can see the Alfa Romeo shield and the Alfa Romeo badge. Um, the shield, I don't know, it looks a little wonky. It looks like it may be a, at a, a little bit out of, out of line, but it looks okay. Uh, headlights look decent. And uh, um, you can see here, you know, the, the, decals and the you know the roundels look pretty good there too um, there's a uh, compartment here in the front which you can see even has the hood latches on there as well but it doesn't actually open but it's nice that they made it in a in a separate piece so it looks you know like uh, the real car there um, you can see, of course, the trumpets underneath the uh, rear glass here. And let's go ahead and take a look at the rear aspect of this car. 
it is a race car, so there's no great styling or anything like that at the back end. Just a pair of taillights and a pair of latches to hold down the rear bodywork. And, of course, the exhaust there, too. And once you lift up the, uh, the lid here, you will see that lovely little 2-liter Alfa Romeo motor. And you can see that they did put a fair amount of effort into detail here. Uh, it looks pretty good. You can see the plug wires. You can see various separate painted hoses. The transmission, which looks like it's actually split in half. Maybe I'll have to fix that. And also the filler cap and all that sort of stuff. And you can see the... Uh, separate shock and spring there too so definitely a nice job of dealing with what's under the hood there uh, when you open the doors here and see what's inside here and let me just go ahead and use my little tool to open this up and I'll open both doors just to make it a little bit easier to see in here And I'll bring a little bit of light onto the subject here, too. Uh, you can see a uh, pretty, pretty nice detail in here as well. Um, let's see if I can get it to focus. Because uh, it's very dark. <laughs> um, all right, there we go. You can see the uh, seat belts, which are separate and fairly nicely detailed with buckles. Uh, you can see the steering wheel, which of course in race cars of this era were simply just used for steering. And you can see the... Oh, come on, focus. See the Alfa Romeo badging in the center. You can see the shifter, and then the center console there too, which contains uh, numerous gauges. And uh, you can't really see the dash because it's actually kind of covered by the steering wheel, but it looks all right. There's, uh, um, again, things look good in here, and, uh, and definitely they did pay attention to detail in this model. When you take a look through the other side here, um, you can see here uh, a better view of the uh, shifter and so on and so forth. Okay, there we go. All right. So anyway, uh, that you know does complete my review of this very interesting and unusual model, at least model brand. And again, it's a, it is a lovely little model. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this review. And if so, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Have a great day.